started in our vinyasa practice. Sitting hips to heels, arms can be outstretched under your head, in between your legs, down by your side. So you know that sometimes my head will be lifted when yours should stay down. And let your belly soften in between your thighs and let your hips sink back to your heels and find some, just some peace in this pose. And today just take a moment to honor yourselves do that every day. And just recognize that built into each and every pose that we do is peace and power at the same time. At any given time, they interchange. So even in a child's pose, you might find some power. And so to make it a little more powerful, we stretch our arms out in front of us. So if you're not there, go ahead and push your arms out. Spread your fingers broad. Really press the, each and every fingertip into the floor. And then push your pinkies towards the edges of your mat. And as you do that, press the heel of the hands forward and the hips back to the heels. Breathe in, breathe out. See if you can lift everything but the heel of your hands off the floor. So the wrists, the forearms, the elbows are off the floor. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Keep that action in the upper arms. Just feel the spreading of it. as if you're pulling the mat from the center apart. Take another breath here as you raise the head up and walk over to the right side. Place the left hand on top or longer than the right. Push your hips a little bit more to the left side. Relax the shoulder down, spread your fingers, point your fingers forward and your hips back. Take another breath. And as you empty the breath, lift your head up and walk over to the other side. Right arm on top or longer than left. Push your hips back to your heels. center on the inhale. Rise up to your hands and knees. Move your hands so they're directly under your knee or shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tuck your toes, arch your back, dip your belly, broaden the collarbones. Exhale, round and curl, top of the foot, shin down, tailbone tucks, let the head rest towards the floor. And then tuck the toes, arch the back, dip the belly, broaden the collarbones. Round and curl as you exhale, chin to chest. See if you can move the sitting bones towards the hamstrings. And then drop the belly one more time. Tuck the toes and keep your spine in neutral now. So crown the head to the tailbone nice and long. Right arm reaches up, thumb up towards the sky. We're going to take circles and drop our hips back to our heels. Big opening circles. Maybe you follow your arm with your eye gaze. And then reverse that circle wherever you are. Sweep the floor with it. And then let's take that right arm back up over the open in the air, spread your fingers, look up towards it, and take it underneath your left arm, bringing it to the left side of the room. Take your left hand forward, move your hips up in the air, and then any variations that you take here. So you might want to bind your left arm behind you, you might want to take your left leg in the air and bind there. So I want you to kind of discover what works for you. And in that pose, find the peace and the power at the same time, or interchangeably. Breathe in, breathe out. Good, if you're flying or anything else, come on back down. Left hand by the face, right arm comes up. Open, look at it. And place the hand down onto the floor. Good, shake out your feet, just tap them out a second, and then tuck them back under. And one more time, left arm up, thumb up to the ceiling. Circle the arms back and around, or if you went in the other direction, that's okay. Just remember, we're going to change directions. And then reverse it. And move through your hips as well, if you have that action. And then take the left arm up, look at it, open up. Take it underneath the right arm, back of the head towards the floor. Right arm reaches towards the front of the room, or the front of your mat. 
Left arm reaches across. Maybe you bind your arm. Maybe you lift your leg. Good. Maybe you bind your lifted leg. One more breath. Start to come down if you're up. Release the right arm out in front of you. This time I want you to take your left arm and meet it with meet it at the front of the mat. Keep your hips in the air and come into that puppy dog pose. Chin towards the floor. If bringing the chin to the floor is too much, just let your forehead come down. Nice stretch all the way underneath the arms, the front of the shoulders and chest. Good. And then push your hips back to your heels and slide your arms a little bit closer towards your knees and then push them forward again. Child's pose. Inhaling and exhaling. Come back to your hands and knees. Adjust them so the knees are under the hips, the hands are under the shoulders, and tuck the toes one more time. Dip the belly, round the back, pull the belly into the spine. Come back to neutral. Take your right arm and left leg back, thumb up to the ceiling, flex the foot, square up your hips. Now take your right arm down and take your left foot over to the right side, tuck the toes under. And as that right hip starts to scoot out, draw it back to center. Good, breathe. Inhale, press through the earth with your heel of your hands. And then lift that left leg up and bring it into your shoulder. Extend the leg and take it down to the floor. Walk your arms out in front of you. Sit back onto your heels. You can tuck the toes or untuck the toes, your choice. One more breath. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Keep your left foot on the floor, gate pose, Parigasana, arms up to the side, stretch, stretch, stretch. Reach out to the right side, right arm down, left arm and leg up, opening up over your shoulder. And then bend the left knee, grab the foot, shin or ankle, push the hip forward, arch your back if you want a little bit more there. If you want more, just solely quad stretch, just draw your heels towards your buttocks. And then release that. Sweep your left arm back around. Bring everything back to the front. Left leg in the air. Knee to chest round and curl. Kick it back in the air. Tuck your right toes underneath you. And bring your chin and chest to the floor. Inhale, rise back up. Left knee to the floor, child's pose. Sit back. Come back to your hands and knees. Left arm, right leg out. Breathe. Inhale. And as you exhale, place the left hand down. Right leg moves over to the left side. And as that left hip shoots out, draw it back towards your midline. So get a nice, deep glute stretch. If you don't feel this, try to draw the hip in a little bit more and the other leg further away. Good. Inhale, bring your right leg behind you, right knee to your shoulder. Extend the leg and place it down on the floor. Walk your hands forward, drop your chest. You can tuck your toes underneath you if that feels better for you. It does for me. Inhale and exhale. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. Rise up, gate pose, arms out. Reach your left arm to the left, right arm and right leg come up and open. And then bend your knee and grab your ankle, foot or shin. Push your hip forward if you want more of a hip stretch and a back bend. Then push your foot away from your hand or from your buttocks. If you want just the quad stretch, keep it nice and close. Take another breath. Careful not to boomerang. Release the arm and leg. And then slide it back behind you. Tucking the left toes if they're not. Round and curl knee to chest. Extend the leg out. Drop chin and chest to the floor. Come on back up. Good, right knee to chest one more time. I don't know if I get an extra one there. And then bring the knee down to the floor, child's pose, sit back. Hang up, come back up onto your hands and knees. Don't hang up. Tuck your toes underneath you, hover your knees off the floor, press the heel of the hand down. Draw the belly into the spine, crown of the head towards the tailbone. Shift a little bit side to side. Maybe think about bringing your right hip to your right elbow, left hip to your left elbow. 
and then come back to neutral, push through the heel of the hand, keep the knee bent, and then keep them bent into a down dog or a turbo dog. Again, pressing through the heel of the hand, the hips are up, but the chest is resting towards the thighs here. Right heel lowers, left knee bends, push the hips a little bit more to the right side. Switch. Okay, come back to center, lifting both legs straight, come high on your toes. Press your chest down towards your thighs as the heels press towards the floor. They may or may not touch. See if you can find a little piece of this very powerful pose. Just settle in and let your breath take you there. On the next inhaling breath, rise up to your toes, bend your knees, turbo dog, and send yourself into that turbo tabletop, hovering your knees off the floor. Pushing the heel of the hand down, finding some strength. Top of the head to the tailbone, nice and long. Lower the knees, child's pose, nice and easy. Inhale back up to all fours, tuck the toes. Hovering tabletop. Lift the right leg off the floor, hold. Lower the right leg, lift the left leg off the floor, hold. Lower the foot, keep the knees bent, turbo dog. Straighten right leg. Push your right hip over to the right side a little bit more. So the heel of the hand is pressing down, right heel is pressing down, getting back into that stretch that we kind of did on the floor as well. And then bend the right knee and press the left heel down and shift your left hip a little bit more to the left side. Use your breathing. And then come back to the center, come up on both sets of toes, come really high, and then bring your chest close. Let your head hang down between your arms. Now stay up on your toes and shift yourself into a plank so you kind of measure out the down dog to plank. If you need to move, move your feet. Hips up in the air, downward dog. High on your toes. Come forward to a high plank. Hold it there. Lift your right leg off the floor. Doesn't have to be high. Lower it, take your left leg off the floor. Hold it, not your breath. Leg down, downward to it, facing dog. Measure out your plank. Hold your plank. Go to your forearms if you need it. Right knee to chest. Right leg down. Left knee to your chest. And down. Downward dog. Just a little bit of warming up the core this morning. A little piece, a little power. One more time to your high plank. Tap both knees to the floor. Release your toes. Elbows come in, drop chin and chest to the floor. Glide onto your belly, low cobra. Elbows hug the sides of your body, crown of the head forward. Toes point back, pushing through your pubic bone and lifting the belly up right above the pubic bone and below the hips. It's a little bit tricky. Empty the breath and come down to the floor. Inhale, come up, lifting up with your back, not your arms, so lift your arms up off the floor. Squeeze your elbows in, retract your shoulder blades, squeeze as if you're gonna pull the elbow points together. And then interlace your fingers behind your back, palms together, knuckles pulling away from you. Broaden the collarbones so that reaching towards the front of your mat. And then maybe lift your legs off the floor. Any position, you want them wide, you want them close, heels together. Lift a little bit higher. And then empty yourself down, hands by your chest, child's pose, tuck those toes. Downward facing dog, hips up in the air. Take a look at the front of your mat, bend your knees, and just take a little walk to get yourself to the top of the mat. Doesn't matter how you get there, but when you do get there, separate your feet about the width of your hips, two fists in between, and just fold over and sway a little bit side to side. Just notice where you're at. Notice what's going on in your body. And then find stillness and see if you can find peacefulness here for a few breaths. Maybe power. Again, it kind of interchanges at any given time. Just get some length in your spine, the cervical spine. Let go of your head. 
On the next inhaling breath, bring your hands to your hip creases. Lengthen your spine. So you, my knees are bent. They're a little bit bent, right? You can have your knees more bent. You can be in a chair. Or you can have your legs straight if you have the flexibility and it's okay for your body right now. When you're ready, raise up to standing. Hands on your hips. Fingers point up. Squeeze the elbows in together and just take a mild back bend. Just enough to open up the front body. And then rise up to stand. Release your hands by your side. Heel toe your feet to touch, so your big toes touch, the heels, the ankles perhaps. And then lift your toes up, spread them apart, and then bring them down one at a time. Rise up onto your tippy toes, pull your knees up, bring the arms overhead. Exhale, lower the heels as you forward fold down into the floor. Hands on the floor, shins or blocks, halfway lift. Melt and fold as you exhale, hang your head. Inhale, rise up. If it's okay for your back, reach the arms out to the side or in front or any which way to come up to standing. And then bring your hands to your heart center as you exhale. Close your eyes for a moment, find stillness, find peace. Breathe in and empty out. And then open your eyes up. Take your arms down and up overhead. Exhale, forward fold, bend the knees, hang your head, let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the right foot back. Oops. <laughs> and left foot back, downward facing dog. Arm downward facing dog if you're in your own mat. Inhale, high plank. Look forward. Exhale, either to your knees or chaturanga. Upward dog or on your belly, low cobra. Downward dog, hips up in the air. Right foot steps between the hands. If you need help, help it out. If you need to, you drop your back knee to the floor. Left leg to right, top of the mat. Empty the breath. Now ride the breath standing all the way. Your choice how you get there. And bring prayer to the heart. Bring the arms by the side. Inhale the arms up. Fold down as you exhale. Again, I offer you the choice of how you get up and down. It's your choice. Head lifts, halfway lift. Left leg steps back. Right leg meets, downward facing dog, hips in the air. Inhale to high plank. Lower through your vinyasa. If you add push-ups, go ahead. If you skip them, go ahead. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left foot to the front of the mat. Help it out if you need to. Right foot meets, top of the mat, halfway lift. Empty the breath and fold. And ride the breath to standing. Hands come down to your heart center. As you exhale, arms come down by your side. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, fold your way, hands to floor, shins or blocks. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right foot back, left foot back, downward dog. Inhale, high plank. Knees are lifted nice and strong. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Right foot steps. Left foot mates it up top of the mat. Empty the breath, fold. Rise your breath to standing. Hands to your heart center. Arms by your side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale your way. So I've changed my arms both times. Lengthen your spine halfway lift. Just playing with it. Exhale, left foot back, right foot meets, downward dog. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot steps, right foot meets. Top of the mat, halfway lift. Fold over, stay here for a moment. Separate your feet back to hips width apart, so measure out with your two fists. Take your peace fingers around your big toe, big toes, one on each side. Wrap your thumbs underneath the fingers and between the toes and the fingers. Lengthen your spine, halfway lift. And as you exhale, draw your elbows out to your side, head to your shins. Send your weight a little bit forward into maybe the balls of your feet. See if you want to find a little balance even if you want to come up onto your toes. Have faith in yourself, right? Halfway lift, inhale. 
Exhale, fold and heels down on the floor if they came up. Release your hands from your feet, fingers on the floor, shins your blocks. And then rise up to standing, bring your arms overhead, heel toe your feet together, hands to your heart center, arms by your side. Inhale, bend your knees, sweep the floor, Utkatasana, chair pose. Sit your weight back into your heels, make sure you can see those toes. As you exhale, forward fold, hang your head. As you inhale, look up. As you exhale, plant your palms and make your way through vinyasa. You come down to your chaturanga or lower to your knees. You do what you've got to do. Right foot comes forward. Stop there for a moment as you turn the back foot on its side. And just check out the heel to the heel or heel to instep alignment. Or if you're like me and noticing over the years that I need a little bit more space, I'm going to keep my feet a little bit wider. But what I'm going to try to do is tuck that right hip under in line with my knee. And incline to the fingertips, spread your fingers and spread your toes. And then slowly rise up with my arms by my side. So first I want to just check out that my headlights are all pointing forward. And then bring the arms up over your head. Good. Bend your front knee. Hands can clasp if you have the opening in your shoulders. If you're finding that you're scrunching your shoulders and your elbows are bent, just bring your arms a little further out. And then lift from your lift out of your torso and maybe do a little bit more of a back bend here. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Pressing the palms together or right biceps by the ears. Just so you can have your arms separated. One more breath. Empty the breath and flow through a vinyasa. Take your time. Take your own sequence. Some of you will add push-ups. Some of you will say, no way, no push-up. Left foot forward, right foot turn. So before you come up, you kind of eyeball the distance. Square that left hip in. Rise to your fingertips and hover. Stand up. And then bring the arms up overhead. And again, you determine if the arms are going to close. But don't, don't come here and back out of the knee, right? You want to keep the bend in that left knee. And you want to have everything else pointing forward. Breathe. Now this is a very powerful pose, but when we settle in, maybe we can find some peace in it. And draw your ribs towards your hips. Breathe, inhale. We got another breath here, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there. Empty the breath as you forward fold, send it through a vinyasa. Take your time, feel each step of the way. They are all individual poses, so make them that way. Don't just go through it. Inhale and exhale. Come to your toes, bend your knees, look forward, make your way to the top of your mat, your weight. Halfway lift. Forward fold, bend your knees. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Weight back to your heels. Rise up. And hands to prayer. Samasitihi, arms by your side. This is what we call dog a tonic. <laughs> she's, she's mesmerized by something. All right, so your namaskar V, one breath for movement. Bend the knees, sweep the floor, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, your way. Upward dog, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Right foot steps, left foot turns, eyeball it as you come up on the inhale. And empty it out on the exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot forward, right foot turns, eyeball it, arms up, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Take five breaths here, inhale. And exhale, one, inhale. And exhale, two, inhale. And exhale, three, inhale. And exhale, four, come on your toes, bend your knees, inhale, look forward. Make your way to the top of the mat, forward fold as you exhale. Bend your knees, chair pose, arms up. Push through your feet, rise up. Hands to your heart center, samasitihi, arms by your side. Breathe. Find the peace in this pose.
Good, I see some clothes coming off. We're getting warm now. Inhale, the arms come up. Bring your right knee to your chest, balancing hands in prayer. Flex your right foot nice and high. And then let's float that right leg back behind, softening the front knee, coming into warrior three with hands in Anjali Mudra. Soften that front leg. We're gonna step back all the way into warrior one. Breathe in. Now straighten your front leg and fold over. Maybe you need blocks underneath your hands. Maybe you need to shorten your stance. Maybe you need to bend your front knee or all of the above. Hands on either side of that leg, lengthen your spine. Forward fold over your left leg. Maybe walk your hands back and grab somewhere on that back leg, anything but your knee. Right, so maybe you're not, I'm not flexible, so I'm gonna go to my thighs. Some of you will grab the ankles. One more breath. Good, replace the hands on the floor. Rebend your front knee, warrior one. Inhale, open to your right side, warrior two, as you exhale. Straighten that front leg and rebend it. Good, check out your alignment. Pull back, Amanda, with that right arm a little bit more and left arm a little bit more forward. That's it, good. And then spiral your upper thighs outward as you squeeze your inner heels towards each other. Gaze is towards your left hand, inhale and exhale. Flip your palms open, reach to the front of your mat and then take the right arm down, left arm up, straighten the front leg again. Lift up and out of that waistline, so don't crunch into your right hip. Pretend that you've got a ball underneath you and you're just gonna fold over it. One more breath. Exhale, windmill back down, hands on the floor. Turn your back foot back to that 45 degrees. Right hand stays, left hand moves to the hip. Awkward twist, left arm up. So if you need to turn that back leg forward, you do that, all right? So either you're in a warrior stance or you're on the ball of your back foot. Keep drawing that left hip in towards your midline, one more breath. As you empty the breath, hands come down, step back and vinyasa or skip. Upward dog, downward dog hips up. Breathe in, breathe out. Left leg high in the sky. Left leg steps to the front of the mat. Take your right leg in the air, float it for a breath, and then step your feet together, forward fold, hang over your legs. This time I want you to red down the stand, bring your arms up overhead, inhale. Exhale, left leg to your chest, hands to prayer. Hold, pressing into that right leg. Draw your right hip towards midline a little bit too. And then kick your left leg back behind you, dip your belly, arch your back, crown of the head forward. Softening the front knee, we're gonna step back into our warrior one, arms up, inhale. Shoulders and hips are squared. And as you exhale, fold over a straight right leg. So you might have to draw your, or bring your back foot in closer. You might have to bend your knee, square everything off, halfway lift, inhale. And do the breath and fold and grab somewhere on that back leg if you can. You don't have to. Right? It might take you out of your piece. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale and exhale. Play with shifting the weight forward and back a little bit. Sometimes we find a little bit more. On the next breath, release your hands, lengthen your spine, and re-bend into warrior one, arms up. As you exhale, warrior two. Open out, good. So think about pulling evenly in both directions. Straighten your front leg once, and then re-bend. Reach in two directions, looking down that right arm, opening up upper thighs outward, squeezing inner thighs inward. Nice work, guys. Good, flip your palms, reach forward. Release the left arm down, right arm up, and straighten that front leg. Pulling that left hip towards the right side. Inhale, and exhale, one more. Good, as we return, exhale, turn it back around the front. Keep your back foot where it is, if you can. Right arm to the hip when we turn to the right side, awkward twist, gaze up towards your right hand. Hug the knees inward. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale. 
Inhale. Exhale, one more. Good, right hand down. Step back in vinyasa. Upward and downward dogs. Right leg in the air. Right leg steps forward. Come to flying, left leg up in the air. And then left leg to right leg. Forward fold over your legs. Rag dog, stand all the way up. Bring the arms up overhead. Bring prayer to the heart as you exhale. Inhale, bring the arms up. Right knee up. Fly, warrior three. Good, step back. Warrior one, inhale. Open right into warrior two as you exhale. Good, reverse your warrior, or your triangle actually. And then come back up to standing and reach out with your left arm, hips to the right. Left arm down, right arm up, triangle pose. You might have to shorten your stance. You might be using a block here. Stacking your shoulders, stacking your hips. And draw that left hip underneath the right hip. Breathe. If looking up to your hand is too much, look down to your opposite foot. Big breath. As you look down, empty the breath. Inhale, release it into a reverse triangle. Breathe. And then bring your left hand in front, right hand to your hip, and come up and fly in Ardha Shavasana, half moon balance. Stacking shoulders, stacking hips, and maybe your arm floats up, maybe your eye gaze goes up, maybe not. Now put some energy in that left leg, and put some energy in that right leg, and tuck the left hip underneath you. Stacking shoulders, breathing in and out. Another big breath. Good, empty the breath, right hand down, square your hips, right knee to chest round and curl, and then right foot by left foot, top of the mat. Lengthen your spine and come into a squat. Just come into a squat here. Don't balance it, chin to chest, round and curl your spine. If you'd like to, bring your arms so that your triceps are resting in front of your knees, thumbs to your third eye, and round your spine. Another breath. Exhale, hands down. Heels down, hips up. Round your spine to stand. Bring the arms overhead. Bring the left knee to your chest. Fly it. Take it back behind you. Step back. Big step, warrior one, arms up. Empty warrior two as you exhale. Flip your palms, reach. Left arm down, right leg straightens. Come back up to standing, reach your left hip back and your right arm forward. Triangle pose, right arm down. Good, stacking shoulders, so taking the time to tuck your tailbone underneath you, lifting out of your right rib cage. Breathe, no tension in the neck, the shoulders. Reach as far or as short as you need to go. Another big breath. As you look down at your right toes, empty the breath. Then inhale, reverse your triangle. Exhale, re-bend your front knee, left hand to your hip. Right arm down, come up and fly in Ardha Shandrasana, half moon balance. And then when you're ready, if you're ready, arm up. And anything you might have done on the other side, Chapasana, or anything else, prayer, you go and do. You do you. One more breath. Good, left hand down, square your hips. Left knee to chest, round and curl, step your feet down, and come into a low squat. Good, once again, bringing your arms in front of your knees, hands to your third eye, or thumbs to your third eye. Now you can stay here, or you can play with a crow, hands in front of you. You have a couple of options, I just gotta step back on my mat a little bit. Couple of options here. I like personally to open my knees and take them on the outside of my triceps, but a lot of you come into this with your elbows bent and resting your knees into the top of your triceps. So play with where you're at today. See if you want to lift off the floor or not. Some of you might even take this into a headstand. And so be careful that you don't jump into it, right? Just jumping into it is a sure way to face plan. And then look forward, don't look down. Good. Breathe in, breathe out. It's just a shifting of the weight. 
And then when you're ready, come back to your low squat. Walk your hands in, drop your heels, chin to chest, hips go up. Separate the feet again. Lift up the toes and slide the hands underneath, stretching the fingers around, or the big toes, excuse me, around the wrist. Look forward, inhale. Exhale, elbows out to the side, head to the shin, sway over side to side. Halfway lift, inhale, find a little more fresh. And then release, release your hands. Rag your legs, stand all the way up. Roll your shoulders back and around. So I step back, come back to the top of your mat if you did, hands by your side, sounds DT he. Inhale the arms up, take your forward fold, hands to floor, shins or blocks, halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana as you exhale, flow through it or skip it. Meet in downward facing dog. Bring your feet a little bit closer together. Soften the left knee and lift the right leg in the air nice and high. Bend the knee to your chest rounding, curl your spine, heel to your buttocks. And step your right foot right underneath your heart. Walk your hands back in. Square up your hips, climb to your fingertips. You might need a block here. So if you have a block, let's grab it and place it to the right side of your foot. Lengthen your spine and bring your hands to your hips and rise up. If you don't have blocks, books are really helpful. Old stacks of magazines, a short little something that lifts off the table. Square your hips off here, shoulders and hips. Right hand on your sacrum, left arm up by your ear. Inhale. Lift out of your torso, and then reach your left hand forward and your hips back. And so you want to get that same line, crown of the head to tailbone. Now reach your arm forward, reach your hips back, and then add the rotation. Maybe going on the outside of the foot's not going to happen, so you can bring it inside or on top of the foot or shin. If you don't need a block, that's fine. I like to use the block, but you don't have to. And, whoop, and then stack your shoulders. And if it suits you, the right arm goes up and maybe your eye gaze goes to that right arm. So working the torso turn more than the shoulder, right? So the shoulder goes with the torso. Big breath. Good. Empty the breath, right hand down. Fold over your right leg. Round your spine, put your forehead on top of your knee. Halfway lift on the inhale, right hand inside the right foot, left arm opens up. So it's kind of a shortened triangle and this time you can shift your hips wherever it feels right to you. Bind your left arm behind your back. You can stay here, you can take a full bind. You can stay here, you can lift your back leg off the floor, fly in your lamba, or you can step up and try for a bird of paradise. I think I, I thought I had a reader model for, okay. okay. So, if you're shifting your weight to your right leg and keeping that on the floor, find a focal point, lift the left leg up, and come back down when you can. Not the way I came down. And then fold over your legs. Step your left foot to your right foot. Bend your knees and put your hands on your thighs. Arch your back. And then push into that rounded spine. Tuck your tailbone underneath you. So push your hands on your thighs. Drop your shoulders down, but scoop your belly all the way in. And then inhale, roll to stand. Bring your arms overhead. Exhale, fold through your heart. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana, your way. Upward dog, downward dog. Bend the right knee, put the left leg in the air. Nice and high, look underneath your nose and step your left foot there. Walk your hands back, adjust yourself so your hips and shoulders are squared. If you have a block or books, put it on the outside of the left foot. If you find that that's too extreme for you, you'll bring it back inside. Climb to your fingertips, bring your hands to your hips and rise up with a flat back. Shoulders, hips, everything pointing forward. Left hand moves to your sacrum, right arm comes up, stretch it up. Lengthen on the inhale, and then stretch forward and back at the same time. As you exhale, twist outside. Of, so you wanna create length before you find the twist or bend. 
Inhale again for length. And then begin to twist to your left side, left arm up. Maybe the eye gaze goes with it. Keep hugging hips towards midline. Inhale. And exhale. Take another big breath here, gang. As you exhale, fold over your left leg. Head to knee, stretch around and curl. Left hand inside, right arm opens up. Option to stay where you are. Option to find right hand behind your back. Option to take both hands underneath that left thigh. Now, so you have a couple more options here. You can take a bird of paradise, which I don't know if you can see Rachel coming up to do. Or you can stay in your lamba, weight into your left leg, and just find some kind of balance. Maybe that right leg lifts off the floor. It's not going to happen on this side for me today. Just a little bit. And then release and fold. Step right leg to left leg. Separate your feet hips width apart, hands on your thighs, arch your back. Round your spine, pull the belly in, tuck the tailbone under. Really scoop out like you got a giant punch in the stomach. And then pushing down through your hands, rag doll up. Roll the shoulders back and around. Heel toe your feet together. If you're not at the top of the mat, take a step or two forward. Inhale. And exhale. Close your eyes for a moment. Find a little stillness, a little peace a little power. Shift your weight left, right leg up. Open up your right knee. Place the foot above or below the knee. Or maybe back on the floor for tree vrikshasana. So any version of tree that you like to do, hug that left leg towards midline. Open your right leg out. And then stretch the arms up. Touch your first two fingers together or any other mudra. So just be careful that you don't collapse that left hip out. Really pull it towards your midline. Breathe. And then bring the hands in prayer. Lift the right leg up. Flex the foot. Extend the right leg out for three, two, and bring it down to the floor. Samasthiti to he. Inhale, hands to prayer. Left leg up. Flex the foot, open it out, help and guide it above or below the knee, maybe onto the floor. And again, make sure that right hip just draws towards midline. So first find the peace in the pose, the power in the pose, before and find some stillness before you start to move. Maybe the arms open up, first two fingers touch. And keep lifting long out of your torso. If you feel really kind of comfortable today, like this is not a challenge, close your eyes. And then bring prayer to heart. Take your left leg up and lift it up. Hold. Extend the leg out for three, two, and bring it down one. Separate your feet, hips width apart, stretch the arms up. Exhale, fold back down, hands to floor, shins are blocked, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, hands on floor, step back, high plank. Hold your high plank, not your breath. Inhale. Exhale, right knee to your chest once again. This time, shoot the right leg over to the left side, and then open up onto your right hand. Vashi Sasana variation, or dancer's bridge, lifting your hips up in the air. Exhale, left hand down, maybe you do a little scissor push-up. Right leg in the air as you come up. Bend the right knee open over the left side. Look over or under and follow it over. Keep your left leg straight. Reverse that dancer's bridge. Push through your hand and lift your hips up. And then rewind. Right knee comes back to your chest and into the right wrist for pigeon setup. Left toes tuck under, shimmy and back. If you need a block, place it underneath your hips so that you can level off and square off your hips. Climb to your fingertips. Take a look behind you. Make sure your toes aren't sickling in and see if you can just sneak a little bit more towards the midline.
time to those fingertips and lift your heart. You can stay here, or maybe you take yourself down a little bit. Come all the way down to your point that you can still maintain an even breath. And you can definitely find the peace and the power. Empty the breath. Let it go. It's like this song that we're in right now. A little peace and power in this song. And if you're not listening to the music, it's Purple Rain. All right, drop your right hip to the floor as you come back up. So now you've got your right hip on the floor, you're a little uneven, and we're gonna swing that left leg around for a seated twist. If you need to adjust it by bringing the bottom leg out a little bit further, and then make sure you're not sitting on the heel, and you can just simply hug in your leg, or twist or bind, half or full bind, your choice. Drawing your left knee to your right side and your left hip towards the back and down. Inhale. And exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. Look to your right side. Swing that left leg behind you. Tuck your toes up. Hover your right shin off the floor. Press it back up in the air. Shake it out. Adjust it. Make some movement in the hip, maybe. In the knee and the ankle. All sorts of movements that you can do here. And then make your way to a down dog. And if you want to take a vinyasa here, feel free. Add on, skip. Whatever you want to do. Come to your high plank. Left knee to your chest, round and curl, and then step that left leg out to the right side and come up onto your left hand, opening up for your dancer's bridge. Breathe, breathe, breathe. As you exhale, right hand down, maybe you do a little scissor push up, and then bring that left leg back up in the air. Bend the knee open over your right hip, look over or under the right arm, and come into your dancer's bridge, reverse, or true dancer's bridge. Lift your heart up. Inhale. Good. Exhale, hand down, left leg back up. Knee to chest, round and curl. And then knee to left wrist, setting up for your pigeon. Tuck your right toes underneath you. If you're going to place the block, place it underneath your sitting bones so you can square off yourself. And then look back behind you and make sure your toes don't sickle in and kind of scoot them a little bit more midline. Shoulders back. Inhale. Come down a little bit further. So maybe this side feels a little bit different than the other side, and you need to take it a little bit slower, right? Make your way down a little bit more timely. And when and if you're ready, surrender. So this is a truly peaceful, powerful pose. For me, it starts out really powerful, and then it ends up peaceful, but then there's some other stuff interspersed in there. But for some others, it may not be that way at all. Take a couple more breaths here and just settle in. You know, notice what's going on and just, you know, you can comment to yourself without getting hung up on it. As you inhale, come to your hands and let your left hip drop to the floor. If you're on a block, you might need to move it. And then sweep that right arm, right leg around. Adjust it so you're not sitting on your left heel. Maybe you hug your knees, maybe you take one arm, maybe you take a bind, full or half. Right hand behind you gives you the lift, and then the twist deepens the stretch. So I, I like to push my hip towards the floor and back, rather than force it. Turn to your center. Sweep your right leg back around. 
tuck your toes under, let that left leg hover for a moment, and then kick it up in the air, shake it out. Do what you need to do here. Move the hip, the knee, the ankle, the toes, whatever. And then come down to the floor and take one more vinyasa or skip it. Upward dog, downward dog. Bring your left knee to the floor and bring your right leg behind you. Sit back in Sukhasana, easy pose. Move yourself around, shift your hips. Place your hands on top of your thighs, close your eyes, sit up tall. If sitting in um, any other variation, lotus, half lotus, works for you, go ahead and keep yourself there. Some of you might even want to go into a 90-90, fire log pose. Or else just sit here and then bring your hands to your heart. See if you can do that without your spine moving, without collapsing. Take your thumbs to your third eye and just connect. And then with subtle pressure there, you might see the, visualize the color of violet. Your third eye center, your intuition, your vision, your inner vision. And then release your hands. Take them behind you, point your fingers forward and just lift up off the floor, stretching the front of your body, the hips, the shoulders, the chest, the arms. Lean back down, switch the cross of your legs, maybe you want to shake it out a little bit. Make the adjustments, bring your hands on top of your thighs to give you a little lift if you're sitting with your lotus, the right leg comes in, maybe it's just a half lotus. And then when you find the length in your spine, bring your hands back to your heart center. And this time taking your hands to your vocal center, your fifth chakra, the Shuddha chakra, the color of blue, which is a very common color right now in my household. Right? Through your voice, your vocal, how you speak, how, you, how you're heard, how you communicate. back behind you, see if you can lift your hips up, drop your knees towards the floor, lift your chest up, and then empty it back down, come on down, lean back and shake out your legs, good, yeah, walk it up, a little Jacqueline Asana to the front of your mat, so that when you go backwards, you are going to be on your mat, not on the floor, flex your feet, nice and strong, reach your arms out in front of you, reaching in two directions. So we're pulling our fingers forward, but I'm pulling my shoulders back. And then as I start to roll down, so I'm gonna go this way for a second and then I'm gonna change my mat. I'm gonna pull my belly to my spine, I'm gonna drag my knees with me and take them overhead just for a breath. And as I come back, I'm gonna stop in boat pose, any variation of boat pose, right? You can be here, you can be here, you can be here, you can be here. Then lower your legs down and come forward. I'm just going to switch my mat around. And then, once again, roll down through your spine. Take your feet with you overhead. So you just touch for a second in your plow. And as you come down, you find your way into any variation of bow. Lift your chest up. Legs down, arms up. Reach forward one more time. Round back. We're going to stay in our plow as we draw the legs in and up and overhead. So don't turn your neck. Listen to my voice. Let your toes come over your head. If you're not taking plow, put your hands on your back or just let your legs come up in the air. Maybe you want to put your feet into, onto the wall. If you are taking plow um, and you have a blanket, you could put the blanket underneath the tops of your shoulders to keep you a little bit of support there. If your feet don't touch down, put your hands on your back so you have some kind of support. And today, let's straddle our plow. So if you're on your back, just open up your legs. And then lift the legs off the floor, support yourself on your back somewhere, off your hips, above your hips if you can. And then 
kind of helicopter your legs around. Right leg over left. Come back and switch. And then find yourself back in your straddle. You can stay here, take your legs up, or go back to your plow in a straddle. And if you are in that straddle plow, feel free to bring your knees over your ears for deaf man's pose. And if you're on your back, take a happy baby. Do that same thing. If you're still in the air, it's hard for me to see. I see some legs up. Begin to bring your back down so that you're resting on your spine and you're 90 degrees at least over your hips with your legs. Flex your feet, reach your hands to your feet, lift up. Doesn't have to be high. And as you exhale, bring the hands down on your side, by your side or maybe underneath your hips. Point your toes, start to lower your legs to the floor, resting on your forearms as the head comes down, resting very lightly on the top of your head. Open up your heart, your throat. So that fifth chakra again your fourth chakra, your heart center. Compassion, love, your capability for that. Any variation of this pose? Yesterday I know we did a little bit more of an Ashtanga based fish pose. And then bring your chin to your chest. All the way down, hug your knees into your chest. Take your arms out to the side, shift your hips right, and let your knees fall to the left. Draw through center. Move your hips to the left, knees to the right. Hug your knees back to your chest, round and curl. Let's just do a bridge or two to just finish up our practice. So hold on to the front of your shins, your ankles. Place your feet on the floor so that your heels are grazing your hands or your hands are grazing your heels. Your knees stay in line with your hips, in line with your, your ankle and second, third toes. And then tilt your pelvis so your pubic bone points upward and peel your spine off the floor. Again, don't turn your head. If you want to stay here and release your hands and take them underneath your back, once again, you can put a block under your back or your hands to support. Or maybe you feel like you're ready to go into a full wheel, so you take your hands by your shoulders, lift them to the top of your head lightly, and then lift yourself all the way up. And any variation, some people take push-ups here, some people lift one leg at a time in the air, right? So you can do that. Maybe some people lift an arm up. Or you can stay in your, your bridge and just take it for what it's worth. When you're ready to come out of it, head down first, top of the head, upper mid, lower back to the floor, and then hug your knees all the way back to your chest. Let's all take happy baby now. Take your hands to the outside of your feet, big toes underneath the bottom of your feet, and draw your knees on the outside of your ribs and your tailbone to the floor. Flex your feet to the ceiling and just open up your shoulders and chest. Maybe you rock a little side to side. Come back to center. Empty it out, let it go, hug the knees all the way in, give yourself this big, big, big final hug. And round your spine. And then begin to settle yourself down onto the floor in Shavasana. If you're on the playlist, we're going to Lay on your back and let everything go. 
start to release your thoughts, your power. Now find the peace. Scan your body from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. Observe if there's any points of tension not so easy, I know. Sometimes it's a very conscious effort. Empty everything out of your body and out of your thoughts. Release the ujjayi breath that you've been practicing with and allow your body to breathe its natural breath. If you have the opportunity to stay in your Shavasana, please do. Take, take every opportunity you can get in that pose. But if you're ready to make your way back into our space, our time, start to move your fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. Deepen your breath and make your way onto either side. It suits you, hugging your knees to your chest. And at your own time, make your way back to a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you. Bring your hands to your heart. So I do not wish that it would rain. <laughs> and I think we were very fortunate in missing this storm in South Florida. So thank you to the powers that be. And to those of you who shared this practice today, Shanti, 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 and peace, peace, peace to all. Wishing you a wonderful day, week, weekend. Namaste. And if you're at home, stay home, stay fit, stay healthy.